Lastly, I would like to talk a little bit about, so that was all sort of traditional ways of organizing by culture and language, things that have existed for centuries, for millennia, um, some would say since time immemorial perhaps. I want to talk now about some sort of like modern forms of social organization that um, give us a bird's eye view of native Alaska. Uh, so population, villages, and corporations. Um, first of all, just as a preface to this section, there are two laws that we're going to talk about a lot in this class, particularly the second one, and you just need to know them. If you want to understand anything about native Alaska, about the history of colonialism, about the present day politics, you got to understand these two laws. So whether or not you find laws interesting, please find these laws interesting. First one, 1937, the Indian Reorganization Act. This act uh, was passed after um, centuries of U.S. expansion. Um, and it allowed for tribes to organize a government approved by the U.S. government, which, of course, there's politics there, um, and, but anyways, it allowed them to organize their own tribal government that would be recognized by the U.S. government and that would be allowed to administer things politically on reservations. Um, so that's called the IRA, or the Indian Reorganization Act. So here in the state of Alaska, we have uh, several tribal groups that are IRA tribes, that are tribes organized as a result of that law, even though, with one exception, Mitlatka, uh, we don't have reservations in Alaska, we do have IRA tribes, such as Kenites Indian tribe, um, here uh, on the peninsula. And the vast majority of tribes, what we call tribes in the lower 48, uh, Native American groups, indigenous nations, are organized through that law. But in Alaska, we also have something else entirely different called Inksa, my apologies for that typo. That should be Inksa. Um, 1969, the Alaska Native Claims Settlement Act. Um, and Inksa, it's bothering me enough that I'm going to fix that right now. Inksa, we'll talk about it a lot in a couple lectures, so I'm not going to belabor the point now. But to be brief, Inksa established about 200 different Alaska Native corporations as ways of sort of administering land and financial interests, money and investments for Native groups. And so those are spread across the state as well. Uh, so that's another identity people may have or community they may be a part of. They might be, you know, I'm part of BBNA Corporation, for example, or I'm part, uh, sorry, I'm part of Bristol Bay, or I'm part of... Um, Adna Incorporated. I'm a shareholder with Adna Incorporated. So this is another identity people may have. Um, so these are those corporations laid out on the map. Arctic Slope, um, Doyan, Nana, Bering Straits, Callista, Bristol Bay, Alu, Koniag, which is the traditional way of saying Kodiak, by the way, Cook Inlet, Siri, C-I-R-I, you've probably seen that. Adna, Chugach, Silaska. Um, you also have a 13th regional corporation, which covers Alaska native shareholders that were not living in Alaska at the time of the passing of the Inksa. So uh, this is another important part of understanding kind of how Alaska native groups are laid out. And we'll talk about that more as the semester goes on. But just kind of, again, layers of identity, village, language, culture group, and now also corporation um, as kind of these economic, but also sort of governmental entities um, that help exercise sovereignty in our, in our state. Uh, we could also talk about Alaska Native Villages. So there's these 13 big regional corporations, but there's also these 200, give or take, uh, smaller Alaska Native Village corporations that specifically administer land um, and sometimes financial things for specific villages spread all across the state. And Alaska is, of course, interesting in the sense that um, Although about 10% of the land is owned by Alaska Native corporations, it's not found in reservations other than Mitlatka. Um, it's not found in reservations in the sense that reservations are in the lower um, 48. Instead, it's as actually corporate owned land, fully owned by those corporations. So we'll talk about why that matters later on. Um, there are also non-village tribes, uh, such as Canadian Indian tribe. Um, but yeah, the Alaska Native villages are also recognized as tribal entities. Okay, that's what I had to say.